at Blockstream on Sea Lightning. And um, as Samson was saying, I'm here today to talk to you about um, kind of this way that I've been thinking about the diversity of nodes on the Lightning Network. Um, and kind of going to go through um, the tools that have been built, kind of looking through the perspectives of what different nodes are trying to accomplish on the network. Um, cool. So just kind of briefly, the Lightning ne Network is getting really big. This picture's from a year ago. Um, and there's a bunch of nodes that are on the, the network. Um, so if we look at a couple stats, they were saying earlier, there's about a little over 8,000 nodes. Um, but you can go ahead and already start dividing these nodes into like two different categories. And one example of a category, um, if you go on oneml.com slash statistics, it'll tell you that there's about 3,000 public nodes. Um, there's about 500 nodes that are running over Tor. Um, so what does that mean? Those are nodes that are publicly addressable. That means these are nodes that you can go out and create a channel with um, because you know how to reach them. So that means that there's about 4,500 nodes that aren't publicly addressable. So that's like one example of a way that you can like divide Lightning nodes into categories is by nodes that are publicly addressable because they're publishing an address that they can be reached at and nodes that can't. Um, cool. So um, I'm going to go ahead and like divide, further divide the nodes into like three different categories. Um, one is that I call like the consumer category. So that's people who want to make payments over the Lightning Network. Um, the next category that I put them in is vendors. These are people that want to sell things over the Lightning Network. Um, so an example would be like the Blockstream store where you can buy stickers. Um, they're running a Lightning node to sell stickers over. And then the third category kind of sits between the two of these, um, and I call them the liquidity providers. So to kind of get a better understanding of the sort of problems um, that these different perspectives on Lightning are going to um, have, I'm going to walk you through really quickly um, kind of how payments work on the Lightning Network. Um, so let's say we have two, two nodes. Um, one of them is publicly addressable. Um, we want to open a channel, so we'll fund a channel. We'll put some money in it um, so that it creates like a balance of payments between the two channels. Um, right now, because one of the channels opened the, open the channel, one of the nodes open the channel, they're going to have a balance and the other one isn't. Um, so let's say we have like a network of these nodes that have opened channels. Um, we're going to call one of them A, and it's got a payment that it wants to make to channel to node number B over in the corner. Um, so it's going to go ahead and send this payment through the Lightning Network to node B. And that all works because there's money that they can send it through. Um, but if we reset this picture and we now say that B wants to send a payment to A, um, given the current like, topology that we have of channels that are set up, B is not going to be able to make a payment to A. Um, and the reason that it's not going to be able to is that there is not enough like, liquidity pointing in the direction at A because all the funds in the channels are kind of on the other side of the channel. Great. OK, so that's kind of like how um, these payment flows have like a directionality. So when you say you're trying to find a route from one point to another, it's not just the channels that you're looking at, but also the balances within the channels that permit payments to flow through. Cool. OK, so if you um, kind of back out a second, we can kind of look at, now we can like classify nodes based on the types of payment flows that they're going to see. Um, so like this is a quick example of like a vendor node. People are going to connect to a node because they want to make a payment to it. Um, and as they send payments, the funds are going to flow into the node. Um, we call that like a vendor, right? Because they're receiving Lightning payments, and in exchange, they're usually like, sending you a good or something. Um, on the other hand, if we have a node and they're trying to make payments out, um, they're going to send payments out through their channels. Um, we call this like a consumer because they're on the net, on the net hole, sending payments out to other nodes. Um, so in general, like you can kind of like. Um, make a generalization about the network that there's consumers and vendors, and the net flow of payments between them are going to be from consumers to vendors. Um, it would be kind of ridiculous to assume that every consumer is going to connect directly to a vendor to send them payments. And so, kind of sitting in the middle, as, like making assumption here, um, kind of the nodes that like make sure that there are routes available to get from consumers to vendors, um, and we call that I classify that like type of node as a liquidity provider. Great. OK, so now that we kind of understand what these three different categories are, um, I'm going to talk through really quickly some existing infrastructure that you can kind of classify. It's not like a strict classification, because um, some of the tools like, definitely fit like multiple categories. But I've kind of roughly divided them based on these like, three things. And so we can kind of talk through how these projects that already exist kind of can fit into these three different like, silos or what types of, pro types of problems that they're solving. Cool. So we can start off with um, projects that help 
help consumers achieve their goals on the network. Um, so the first one of those is autopilots. Um, if you haven't heard of what an autopilot is, it's basically like an automated service that runs on your Lightning node. Um, it looks at the Lightning network and it decides what um, it decides what nodes uh, are good to connect to, such that you have the ability to like route payments. Um, and it kind of runs on autopilot, which hence the name. Um, there's two out ex two examples that I know of currently. There might be more. Um, we have a plugin for C Lightning called Autopilot, and then LND has an autopilot that I believe ships with it automatically and runs when you start it, but I'm not clear on the details around that. Um, cool. The other kind of like technology that's being developed for consumers tends to be like what I would call wallets. Um, I think the best example of this is the one that Lightning Labs has made, their desktop wallet client. Um, you can kind of tell that this is directed for like the consumers and that they don't list your IP address or um, node information, like your public key anywhere on it. Um, you also will notice that it doesn't say anything about channels, it just has a balance. Um, so it kind of abstracts you away as like the consumer and it's just presenting like a unified interface that's like, okay, if you want to make a payment, never mind how we're making the payment, but like this is how much money you have to send out. Um, so like as a consumer, all you're going to know is how much balance is in your wallet and you won't really know any of the details underlying like what your channel topology looks like. Um, cool. And then there's this other class of like projects that I've been calling like node proxies. These assume that you already have like a separate node and you just want to be able to access it to send payments um, from like your desktop or a mobile client. Um, you typically kind of send the, see these in two different places. One is like Chrome extensions. Um, there's one for C Lightning called um, Kilowatt or KWH, um, and another one for LND that Will was talking about, which is Joule. Um, and then there's also like the Spark Wallet has been developed for like the C Lightning kind of um, set of like projects. Um, and that's got like a mobile client and a desktop client that you can just like kind of like proxy to talk to your node and lets you spend money. Cool. Okay, so that's like consumer tech. Um, the next stuff is like projects that have been made for vendors. Um, so this is if you want to sell things over the Lightning Network, what kind of tools have been created to help you accept payments? Um, there's payment plugins. I think the one that I'm the most familiar with is the WooCommerce plugin that's made for C Lightning that lets you accept payments um, through WooCommerce. Like it's a WordPress plugin. Um, I believe that OpenNode also has a plugin for PrestaShop. Um, I'm sure there's more. These are just the ones that I know about. Um, there's another set. This is kind of like a, a superset of the payment plugins. So it's basically taking everything that you need to like run a shop and putting it kind of all in a box. Um, so like BTC Pay, I think, is very similar to this. So you can run this on a node and it lets you accept payments over a variety of ways. I don't know a lot about the details. Um, one of my coworkers recently launched a project that he's calling the Store in a Box project, which is basically like a collection of WordPress, Lightning Node, Bitcoin D, um, and the WooCommerce plugin kind of all in one. So you can like put this on a server and set it up and run it and you'll have like a Lightning store running and working. Um, and then there's also like apparently you can type in lightninginabox.com and you'll get a box that's got a lot of software already on it. Um, cool. And then the, 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 the next kind of like, what does the vendor landscape look like? Um, are these like services popping up that I'm calling like third party proxies? And again, I apologize, I don't know a whole lot about how they work, but I kind of classify open node in this category um, in that they do sort of semi custodial, run a lot of the Lightning Network infrastructure for you, and then so you can kind of proxy through them to get to Lightning Node. Cool, so that's vendor stuff. Um, the last section, these are like liquidity providers, but they're also, I would call them like tools that help with liquidity problems. Um, so there's been tools to created to like kind of help you move money from the Lightning Network on and off of the Bitcoin chain, blockchain. Um, that's what Lightning Loop does. Um, there's rebalancers. So this is if you, have, um, if you have a bunch of channels open and you want to move funds between them. Um, there's a plugin for C Lightning called the rebalancer, which will help you kind of move your funds from one channel that has a lot to one that doesn't. Um, and then finally, there's like actually services that you can go and get liquidity from that already exist. Um, BitRefill runs one called Tor, and then Alan Big had some form that you could fill out that supposedly will send you inbound liquidity if you need it. Great. Okay, so that's like the existing infrastructure. Um, I want to talk really quickly about kind of some new projects that are in the pipeline on the spec side that, um, and kind of how they fit into these like three categories. Um, so the first one is called trampoline payments. 
This was a proposal that I believe was sent out on the Lightning Dev Listserv last month, so like maybe late March, early April. Um, it was Pierre, Pierre and Christian Decker, I think, kind of came up with the idea. But basically, this is a way that instead of a um, instead of a, like a client needing to know or a consumer needing to know exactly the route to get to the person they want to pay, they'd be able to kind of delegate some of the pathfinding responsibility to a larger like kind of um, I guess what I would call like a liquidity provider in the network who can then help them get to their final destination. Um, Neutrino wallets, so this is basically like the SPV um, latest iteration that is supposed to help build um, better mobile clients so you can run like self-custody mobile clients um, more effectively. Um, there's this proposal, uh, my proposal for the dual funded channels um, which I'm currently working on. So this basically will help with liquidity and that instead of um, people will be able to start with more balanced channels. Currently when you open a Lightning Network channel, only one side can contribute funds, but with dual funded then both sides would have the opportunity to put funds in before it gets established. Um, there's also splicing, which is basically like taking um, loop in and loop out, which is what um, the Lightning Labs, like their, their Lightning Loop project, and moving it kind of more into the spec such that anyone would be able to move funds on and off chain within a channel without having to like close and then reopen the channel. Um, cool. And then like the, the last thing is like a liquidity advertisement um, kind of bit, such that nodes that have liquidity would be able to advertise the liquidity over the network. Um, so that if people needed it, they'd have like a easier way to like go find liquidity that they needed without having to like fill out a form on lmbig.com. Um, cool, okay, so that's basically all of the future looking work. Um, uh, I wanted to take like a last two seconds to kind of like um, shill for my own stuff that I'm working on. Um, I recently started a Twitch channel um, where I've been live streaming the work that I'm doing on Sea Lightning, especially around the um, the dual, fundal, dual funding, sorry, dual funding implementation that I've been working on. Um, I'm not promising like amazing content, but um, you know, I'm kind of like slow typer, sort of. Um, but if you're interested in kind of seeing what it's like to like work on Sea Lightning, um, you should check out my channel. It's on Twitch. Great, cool. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah.